Hello and welcome again to Racecraft. You're probably getting sick of seeing this car in here. On my last video, you will see that I got this going pretty well. We blasted down the street, it was going fairly well. But I'm still not entirely happy with it because I think we can make it a bit better. One of the problems that I had when we first got it going with my own throttle body injection on it was that up to about 3,500 RPM, we had a miss. Not so much a miss as really bad running. And I managed to band-aid that by changing the injector sequencing. And that made it a whole lot better and the car pulled really hard. But I got to thinking about it and I think I know what the problem is. And that is in injector timing. The amount of time that the injectors are open. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take out the 1,000cc injectors that I've fitted into this and I'm going to go to these much smaller Volvo injectors which are about 450ccs and the idea is to get a much longer injector pulse because I think the problem that I've got with this is that the injector pulse is not long enough but I'm going to explain that with the use of the whiteboard so Get the whiteboard ready and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I've got my whiteboard ready here. Actually, this is a bit like being at school, isn't it? So I'm going to try and explain what I think is, is happening. So we're going to delve into some maths and some milliseconds and, and stuff like that. So bear with me on this. Okay. When the engine is turning over at 6,000 RPM, it takes 10 milliseconds to do one revolution. And I've represented that here sort of graphically. This length here is about 10 milliseconds. This here is about 30 milliseconds, which I'll get to in a moment. Okay, so we've got one engine revolution takes 10 milliseconds. Our injector pulse is 4 milliseconds per injector. So we've got 4 times 4, that's 16 milliseconds. So how do you get 16 milliseconds into a 10 millisecond window? Well, actually, it's pretty easy. What happens is if this is the injector pulse here, it just continues on into the next window, so to speak. So that would be, say, four milliseconds there. Number two injector has already started. It's starting to inject as well. And it overlaps number three. So number three overlaps. And then finally, number four overlaps. So that's at 6,000 RPM, which I think explains why, once we got the revs up, the car ran really well, because we had an uninterrupted fuel flow. But it all gets different at 2,000 RPM. So 2,000 RPM, three times as long, we've got 30 milliseconds for the engine to do one revolution. We also had about a three millisecond injector pulse. So if you look here, 7.5 milliseconds. So our injector pulse would have been about, about that long. I, mean, I know this is rough, but bear with me. Okay, so that's our, that's our three milliseconds in there. So that means that for about 4.5 milliseconds on each injector pulse, we had no fuel. So as the revs rose from 2000 RPM, this 4.5 got shorter and shorter as the revs went up till we finally got the, the overlap on the injectors like we've got up here at 6,000 RPM. So that was the reason to go to much smaller injectors. Those Volvo injectors, they're supposedly about 450cc or about 45 pound injectors, which is about half of the thousands that I had. A little bit of testing and we got 10 milliseconds at wide open throttle. Now 10 milliseconds has worked out really, really well because that means at 2000 RPM, we've actually got an injector pulse that actually goes into the next window. So 7.5 milliseconds, 10 millisecond window pulse. So then when the next injector starts, it overlaps this one and then it overlaps this one and then overlaps this one. And I think that's why we got the car going as well as it does go, because now there is no hesitation. You stomp on the throttle at 2000 RPM and we've got plenty of fuel flow. 
So I hope that's been reasonably clear, but it actually solved the problem. All right, so I've pulled out the 1,000cc injectors and I've got these, these Volvo ones here. The only problem I've got is that they're considerably longer than these originals, which of course means that the fuel rail holder doesn't fit anymore. So I've had to make up some more longer ones to be able to get them in. But having done that now, uh, these should just plug straight into there, which they do. There we go. And our new injector holder bracket will just drop straight down on that and hold that in place for us. So we'll get all this bolted up. I'll put the laptop on it, fire it up and see how we go. think it works. If any of you out there have got other ideas or you can correct me in, in the assumptions that I've made here, please put it in the comments or email me or, or let me know because if I'm making mistakes here I'd really like to know about it. So what can I say? Thank you for tuning in and uh, we'll see you on the next video.